Today I'd like to tell you a little bit about my retracting caster system. All my power tools have quick and easy retract casters and that's the one thing that makes it possible for me to have a practical workshop in my garage. Let's start with the uh, table saw. Foot pedal extends the casters on my table saw. And I can pull it out of its parking spot, rotate it for large pans. or return it to its parking spot and when it's returned touch the uh, latch or latching pedal the casters retract, then the saw sits firmly on its feet. I've capped my saw up on sawhorses uh, so I can pull the rolling stock out from under it and show you how it works. It consists simply of two lengthwise pieces, two crosswise pieces. The saw legs rest on these two lengthwise pieces, and the crosswise pieces hold the casters attached with hinges and as the caster support boards rotate downwards the whole assembly is jacked off the floor. Push down with your toe or latch it. The weight of the saw pushes the lengthwise pieces down and rotates the caster support boards upwards and the saw rests firmly on the floor. The latch operates automatically with gravity when you push down. This is my planer stand. Again, casters retracted casters extended. I've got a chunk of foam to tip it onto. set of casters, or the near set of, have fallen out as I tipped it up. Remove the latching pedal. Okay, and there's the caster assembly. Again, the casters jack the cabinet up by bearing against dowels at the very outside of these boxes in the cabinet. And as you press down on the pedal, on the pedal arm, the casters extend downward and jack the cabinet up via these large dowels. The pedal arm is connected again to the furthest caster plate and the uh, nearest caster plate through a metal strap with a slotted hole. My jointer and bandsaw use similar retracting caster arrangements, maybe a little bit more crude. Both have a pedal to extend and retract the casters. The 
I'm going to tip the joiner up so we can take a look at how these casters are made. I have to release the dust collector holes. to the front by which the cabinet is jacked off the floor. As the pedal is depressed, these faster support plates go into a, a flat position and push upwards on the cleats at the front and back of the cabinet. Here I've used two rigid casters at the back and two swivel casters at the front. Four swivel casters would mean that the unit might not be quite as stable when the casters are extended. So to give a little bit more of a, a little more stability, I've got two rigid widespread casters at the back. My oscillating spindle sander, miter saw stand, and my combination melt disc sander all use the same kind of uh, retracting caster system. Push down to extend, unlatch and release to retract. I think my uh, sander might be the easiest one to, to tip up. Okay, here we just have four rigid casters. Uh, normally I just pull the sander in and out of its stall to use it. I don't spin it around for any particular reason. Remove the pedal. And here's the caster system. Again, there's a cleat at the back of the cabinet and a similar cleat at the front. And the uh, caster mounting plates simply jack the cabinet up by the cleats at the front and the back when the pedal is pressed down. When the pedal is retracted or released, the weight of the cabinet pushes down on these caster mounting plates and allows the casters to retract. And the whole assembly just fits loosely inside the cabinet. My antique shop smith, which I use mainly as a drill press, has the same kind of caster system underneath it, except there's no latch. I simply depress the pedal and push it to the side to extend the casters. And then the whole tool can be rolled around. That's one of the first retracting casters systems that I made. I put retracting casters under my mechanics tool cabinet. Uh, I couldn't figure a way to put a foot pedal underneath and still preserve space for this lowermost drawer. So I operate the retracting casters with a handle. I didn't really need uh, retracting casters on the cabinet so much as I needed locking casters. And my garage floor slopes a bit and the garage driveway, uh, the, my house driveway slopes, front street slopes. If I didn't have some way of locking the casters, the tool chest would be down at the bottom of the street. Anyway, I've got a system of retracting casters under here. So uh, I can lock the cabinet in place and let's have a look at them. Going to, I've removed most of the screws from the back. I'm just going to pop the back off. Awesome. 
Okay, here's the caster system. The handle at the front is connected to a rock shaft, and that has mounted on it a short arm which rotates down to an over center position against the stop and pushes down on a push rod that serves to rotate my caster mounting plates down so they can jack the cabinet off the floor. Retracted, extended. Here's the caster mounting plate. Three casters on each side and an arm that rotates it down or allows it to ret retract. And this caster mounting plate pivots on the dowel at the outer upper end of these uh, boxes that receive the, the caster mounting plates. The casters are good quality, hard synthetic material, double ball bearings, roll ball bearings between the fork and the mounting plate, row of ball bearings between the fork and the retaining washer, so they swivel easily under load. The cabinet weighs about 200 kilograms, about 450 pounds when it's full of tools, so it needs a good caster system to make it roll and swivel easily. I think it's a pretty good design and uh, may have some graphic I've even managed to adapt my retracting caster system to my wood length. Um, here again, I think about 250 kilograms, maybe 600 pounds of length. So I've got uh, under each leg a retracting caster. So can I, I can extend the casters, move the blade out for a little bit more room to work, and also for cleaning up underneath it. Steel rollers, so they don't flatten. And with the casters retracted, the lathe sits solidly on its feet, and I mean, I mean solid. I'm going to zoom in on one here and, sh and to show you what I've done. Okay. There's... I've added a, a catch on the leg, on the cast iron leg here, a small metal catch for the latch to latch the pedal down in its down position. And there's two parts to this. Well, flip up. A little retainer plate. And that allows the casters to be removed. Mirror image on the opposite side. So here again I've got the arm attached to the rear caster mounting plate. The front caster mounting plate attached to, with a hinge, and as you press down on the pedal, the ends of these caster mounting plates jack the tool up off the floor. I don't, I didn't put, I don't think it would be possible to put swivel casters under here, so I've used rigid casters because I only use this to pull the the lathe out a foot or two from the wall for cleaning or for giving me more work room. And then under the legs, these legs had a cast web in this, at this location, so I've added some shim blocks underneath the cast web to provide a cleat or a pad for the retracting caster to, to jack up upon. Well, I hope you enjoyed my review of the different caster systems that I've developed for my power tools and hope that you found the information useful and informative. I don't expect to publish any plans for any of these caster systems because I'm more or less uh, publishing the ideas um, 
and hoping that you can adapt them to your own tools if you see, if you see fit. Anyway, I invite you to subscribe to my channel. I hope to produce a new video every week or 10 days and uh, invite you to check the like or dislikes. Questions are welcome. Thank you very much for watching.